Okay, we're going to jump right into our next session. And I've got another great guest with us today. Antonio Riggs is with us today. And Antonio works with students like you all the time as you're working to create that plan for yourself to prepare yourself for the career you want to have after graduate school. And there are things that you can do from day one to prepare yourself to help you to be able to do that. Uh, Antonio is the Associate Director of Career Services here on campus. He just put his name and his email in the chat, but um, and I'm sure that he'll, may, he'll be sharing that as well. Um, and uh, I'm going to be turning it right over to him. Let him share more with you. And Antonio, you've got access to share your screen, so you can do that. And then there'll be time for questions, as always, afterwards. So, Antonio, it's all yours. All right. Hey, thank you um, very much for the kind introduction. It's nice to be here today. I didn't know we were going to have a packed house, but it's good. Good stuff. Um, let me see, get this thing rolling here. So as stated, my name is Antonio Riggs. I um, assist with the career and professional development and employer engagement uh, for our students here at the University of Michigan Flint. So I uh, am here as a resource for you if you wanted to explore careers, engage with other professionals and or um, get connected with people that may be in opportunities that may meet your interest or you want to connect with some different employers that are out there. So I guess I'm going to talk about, you know, how to jump start your career in grad school. So sometimes we all have uh, different reasons why we come back to school. Uh, some people come to get a promotion, look for a job, or just trying to, you know, knock something off the, the bucket list. And so I wanted to kind of, you know, encourage you to put that in perspective, you know, what's your plan for grad school, you know, what's your career goal, and how can your academic interest and or degree help you achieve that career goal? And hopefully, throughout this presentation, I'll be able to talk about some resources that can help you uh, achieve your career goal here at U of M Flint. You know, I am a fan of uh, writing things down and creating a vision for myself. Um, within that vision, I try to create milestones um, and identify barriers that I can potentially come across. And so on your leisure time or on your free time, just think about, you know, write down, you know, your career goals, your academic goals, and think about either barriers you could come across or what are those milestones that you're going to come across as you begin to achieve your short-term or long-term career goals. And then try to figure out how can my degree help me get to that career um, goals and how can you integrate your passion um, into your coursework that's gonna help you build the foundation to meet the bare minimum qualifications for that opportunity that you're considering. So um, during your program and thinking about, you know, your future career goals, I think it's some of the best practices as always to, you know, research. Uh, in grad school, you're probably doing a lot of research, so that shouldn't be hard to do. Um, outside of the academic process of doing the research, you know, start to think about that career piece, you know, based on my undergraduate experiences, the degree that I have, how is that going to help me get to that next step? Right. And then researching companies, job titles, potential opportunities where um, you can begin to either start branding yourself, making those connections, um, identifying some of those companies that are hosting those opportunities. And even if you don't want to do the you know, work for a company, if you wanted to go off and be an entrepreneur or be a consultant, you know, start putting those things into place by, you know, identifying uh, what you need to do and how you're going to get there through that research process. I'm a fan of networking. Uh, that's 80% of my job is to network. I go out, I meet with students, I meet with employers, I meet with community members and other stakeholders and figure out how can I get everybody connected in some way, shape or form. So it's a great benefit uh, for our students as they transition, um, I guess, from backpack to briefcase, so to speak. And so think about, you know, all your networking opportunities that are out there for you here at the university. Uh, we do have some job boards out there. Uh, Handshake, everybody should have an account on Handshake. 
If you don't have an account on Handshake, um, let me know and I can get you set up with that. But there are several other job boards out there too. Uh, we subscribe to Handshake. Everybody knows the big ones, Indeed, ZipRecruiter, um, Career Builder, Snag a Job. So, I mean, those are all good resources. But Handshake is the leading job board for um, college students that are out there and all of the 13 Michigan public schools um, subscribe to Handshake as well. Also, don't forget about joining those professional clubs or organizations. If they're a student-led organization and or professional organization that is out there for you, it all serves as a good resource and continue to build your brand uh, throughout your network. In your research process, I would like to encourage you to explore you know, your different career options, leveraging some of these platforms. Focus 2 is a platform that we subscribe to as a university. Um, I will have to get the actual website for you and submit that um, to Chris Lewis and he'll get that out. But if you go to our careers website, we do have a link there, which is umflint.edu forward slash careers. Um, focus two should be the very first link under student and the access code is M ready, all lowercase. You can create your account there. The cool thing about Focus 2, they have some different assessments you can take, you know, looking at your values, interests, personality, skills, and you can um, answer a short survey about those different areas and they'll come up with some career opportunities. And so these career opportunities will be a listing of job profiles that you can read, review, um, look at salary um, at different companies that possibly offer these opportunities. Focus 2 does have uh, a couple of job boards embedded within the platform. If you don't want to take the assessment, there is a link called What Can I Do With a Major? That link, uh, you click it and it'll show you all of the University of Michigan Flint majors. And when you click uh, that major, it'll give you a listing of some of the job opportunities that are out there that could possibly meet your interest. Also, there is another link called What Can I Do With a Major? This is sponsored by the University of Tennessee, and it's the same process. You know, you can click the link and they have a listing uh, interactive map of uh, different job opportunities. You can continue to research and how that ties into the different majors. So Focus 2 is a good resource for the assessment piece, identifying potential opportunities you can do with your major, your major and there's some other uh, features of that platform as well if you wanted to research or assess your um, skills as it relates to the survey distributed by the National Association of Colleges and Employers. They say that all graduates should have uh, competency in eight skills that all employers look for. And if my mind serves me correctly, one is problem solving, critical thinking, communication, uh, career management, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. There's computer competency as a skill, and I'm missing, I think, two or three. Um, but there's a survey that goes out, and they just assess you know, over 300 employers on what are the top skills that students want. And the National Association of Colleges and Employers put those together. Um, for students to review and find different ways on your campus so you can become uh, competent in those different skills. And most of the programs and activities we do um, as far as career professional development is based around those NACE competencies. A couple other websites that I want to throw your way is Career One Stop or ONET Online. Um, I like Career One Stop. It's my go-to. Uh, you can Google Career One Stop or it's uh, www.careeronestop.gov. I'll drop that in the chat. I believe it's org, sorry. Um, that's a website where you can take an assessment as well, identifying your values, interests, personality, skills. They also have uh, interviewing information there, resume information there. They also talk about different uh, resources as it relates to jobs. One of the things that I do like about them is they do list uh, a variety of professional development organizations that you can become a part in and a host of other resources. 
the career one stop ties into the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Um, coming from that piece, you also can research uh, different careers utilizing uh, the Occupational Outlook Handbook as well. And so those are two great resources for you to do some career research and look at the job outlook or projections for different career opportunities that maybe uh, meet your interest. Another website that I use um, in my personal life as well is ONET Online. 75% um, of my resume came from ONET Online. I didn't steal it directly from the site, but I did leverage um, some of the profiles, how they list uh, information about different uh, job opportunities I've done in the past and made those connections on how those skills, abilities, duties, tasks, and responsibilities can transition into another role. So if you're you know, like me and you are a fan of working smarter and not harder, um, I believe ODEPT is a great uh, resource for you as well when it comes to building you know, your your document, right? The resume is one of those big things that we use for employment opportunities. So ONET should be your friend. Okay. So um, <clears throat> in that research process, you can leverage all of those different websites. Um, to seek out or give, get more information on uh, opportunities that may meet your interest. I already gave you those uh, different tools uh, so you can check out those resources at your own time. If you need help navigating those different resources or websites that I talked about previously, you always can shoot me an email. We can set up an appointment to further discuss how to navigate um, those websites. And once you identify you know, the different positions that you have, I would suggest going out and doing a little bit of research on some of the companies that are out there recruiting um, for your areas of interest and start to uh, follow them or go to their careers web page. Uh, you can set up your profile on the online applicant tracking system and start to get the um, news feeds from their career site um, when they post different job opportunities that may meet your interest. So, uh, looking for you know a job opportunity and doing that whole research piece for uh, careers is a full-time job. And I think if you go in and set up those um, uh, RSS feeds on the different applicant tracking systems can help you with your job search. So you don't have to log into these databases every time. You can just um, get those newer job opportunities email directly to you. So that cuts out some time as it relates to the job search process, as well as you get the most updated information once it gets posted on those applicant tracking systems. Um, so you have that out there. And then you also should um, make sure your skills and experience meet those minimum qualifications. And if you're like me and you haven't applied for a job in a while and you're looking to apply, uh, for some opportunities. There is six career specialists on campus that can assist you with that process of developing a cover letter resume, you know, in the job search process, whether if you use Handshake, Indeed, um, or another platform, but we are here to help you. And I'll introduce uh, those individuals later with a flyer um, down. I think it's the last flyer that I have up here to highlight who those career managers and specialists are. And so in that process of doing that research, making sure that you're trying to find ways to meet the bare minimum qualifications. In my opinion, when you read those different job descriptions, try to meet at least 75 to 80 percent of the minimum qualifications. I think that will increase your chances of securing a future opportunity. So during your grad school programs, you know, if you know that you're going into a position, you understand the duties, tasks, responsibilities, you've read the minimum qualifications, making sure you engage in opportunities to enhance your uh, opportunities to meet those bare minimum qualifications. Also during your time, you wanna to try to think about, you know, what story are you telling, right? When you're developing your documents, you're doing your research and in your academic programs and your past experiences, um, you want to paint the best picture as possible um, on your resume. Um, sometimes it's hard to write everything about yourself um, on one or two pages of a resume. So I am a fan of networking. 
you know, the times of going into the local store or local company and asking for an application is over, right? So everything is online now. And so the, hand, the online application process is very hands-off and you really can't introduce yourself and explain who you are, what you do, and why you do what you do, right? And so going to opportunities to engage with other professionals is super important. Um, so networking, meeting people in those roles, you may be going for informational interviews or seeking opportunities to job shadow if you uh, don't have experience in those different areas. So those are different ways to network. On our website, uh, we do have some questions and additional information on the uh, job shadowing and informational interview process. If you ever need help with trying to connect uh, with someone in the uh, profession of your interest, please let me know and I'll do my best to identify someone for you. Or we can uh, leverage our alumni network to identify some of those people. Earlier, I talked about Handshake. Handshake is the leading job board um, for colleges and universities. There's a couple out there, a um, couple other uh, uh, job boards out there, like 1220. Simplicity um, are some others that um, I've used in the past. Uh, we subscribe to Handshake. Uh, there could be 50,000 jobs across the U.S. posted in Handshake at any given time, including Canada and uh, Mexico. And so you all have access to Handshake. You can uh, log in with your unique name and password. If you have any issues with that, let me know. Um, but you can search for jobs. You can review events from the university uh, career staff and or you can participate in events from uh, different employers that may have some recruiting or networking events in the virtual space and or in person. So once you get in, we tell students to log in, set up your profile. Basically, if you use LinkedIn or any applicant tracking system, it's the setting up that online application. Next, we ask students to set their account to community. Um, it's in the settings. If you set your account to community, that gives us as staff members access to the documents you upload, and it also opens your profile so employers can see your uh, resumes and your uh, profile that list your background and experiences, however you decide to set that profile up. These employers do have uh, the options to email you in your handshake inbox, right? So yes, you have a University of Michigan email address and you can set that up to receive emails from Handshake to your U of M account, or you can just log in a Handshake and check your Handshake inbox for employers that will contact you. Um, I suggest doing it that way and you can have that communication uh, with those employers in Handshake and you don't have to worry about, you know, transitioning uh, email addresses with an employer and you know, forwarding messages out of that inbox, but it is a great way to network with recruiters as well as um, apply for jobs through Handshake and attend a variety of different events. You can upload resumes, cover letters, transcripts, any supporting documents that uh, is a part of your portfolio in Handshake. Also in Handshake, when you look at um, different job opportunities or companies, um, it will list you know, the different uh, students that may be from the university or the recruiter um, that you can click on and inbox them and do that networking opportunity with some people that worked there in the past. And you can look at um, your peer group of individuals that could have worked at Handshake if they're at another institution. So that's why I like Handshake. It's a lot of opportunities to network with other people, see the different job opportunities. You can set up different filters and you can, um, set up your uh, career interest, so to speak, so you can tell the system if you're looking for a full-time job, part-time job, or an internship, what industry you want to work in, what city, state you're looking for opportunities in, and they'll set this algorithm up where those are the jobs that you will see first based on some of the um, criteria you put in the career interest section. We also encourage people to leverage LinkedIn. Um, as you know, LinkedIn is one of the primary uh, leading professional social media platforms that are out there. Um, I leverage LinkedIn. We have a couple of different uh, groups out there on LinkedIn. So for me, I have the Office of Student Career Advancement and Success Group where, you know, I send a lot of job emails on Friday. But if you don't see that, you can 
join my group on LinkedIn and you can see some of those opportunities um, that I post in there as well. Um, so great for networking. You can search for job opportunities on LinkedIn. Um, one thing that some students may not uh, pay attention to for the networking piece or the, the learning management system in LinkedIn, you know, it's great for networking, but there is a learning management system in there that the university subscribes to, and you do have access to LinkedIn learning. So if you're interested in learning something outside your academic program, or you wanted to get a brush up on your interview skills, there are several modules in the LinkedIn learning platform that you can review, uh, get certificates through LinkedIn, or get those, um, I forget what they call those icons that you can, badges. Um, to add to your profile as well, because as we get older, we're always going to be lifelong learners. So um, I use LinkedIn Learning um, for workshops. When I wanted to learn about cryptocurrency, I'll jump right on LinkedIn Learning to brush up my skills and learn a little bit more about that. So LinkedIn is a good platform for you, too. Um, professional clubs and organizations, always a go-to. If you're not a part of a professional club or organization as it relates to your future profession, I highly suggest that you start to research those, right? So you have some on-campus professional organizations, you have fraternities, sororities, you have, um, you know, clubs and associations that tie into your future career. Um, and as a college student, you can join those organizations at minimum cost, no more than 50 bucks for a student membership. And um, you maintain that membership and you get all the uh, perks as a paying professional member. So I'm a fan of that. Um, there's several, if you look at the Student Involvement and Leadership Office as it relates to student organizations on campus, as grad students, you do have access to participate in our on-campus organizations and clubs. And if you wanted to go outside of campus and look at some of those other professional organizations, that's totally up to you. If you need help researching professional associations, Career One Stop should be the platform for you to do a little bit more research there. There's opportunities to volunteer. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, employers will reach out and ask, do we have students to uh, volunteer? Um, for different things like the Allied Challenge, right? So they're looking for volunteers and some interns to go to Warwick Hills and do some work with all those cool professional golfers that come uh, into our area. And so that's another place where you can do a little bit of networking. And so our office, the Office of Student Career Advancement and Success receives a variety of opportunities, whether if it's uh, internships, full-time, part-time jobs and or volunteer networking opportunities. So that is always out there for you to participate in. And thinking about, you know, the, the faculty and staff, you know, we're here to help you. Um, as stated, there's five other career professionals on campus that are here um, waiting to meet you all. So make sure you leverage um, us to help you get to those opportunities um, that you want to get connected with. And if you look at your screen, there's about 25 to 30 of you on here. And so don't forget to leverage your personal network, right? Um, the people that you go to school with, the people that you're going to work on your projects with. I got my first three professional opportunities post-graduation was people that I knew from my academic programs and my uh, fraternity membership. And so make sure you interact with your colleagues, your peers, uh, get an understanding of who they are, what they do, and their professions and express you know who you are and possibly how you can either collaborate do a partnership or you know if they go off and find an opportunity you're within their network if they need somebody within your profession and so i am a fan of networking and leveraging my personal network for some cool opportunities and also seek mentorship um, from other professionals. If you did the informational interview, job shadowing, or you wanted to leverage the faculty and staff um, for a mentorship opportunity, it's all a part of networking. In my 10 years at this university, I have not met anyone that does not like to talk about what they do and connect people with other people that um, they think it will be beneficial for you to engage in. So mentorship, in my opinion, is important. We are trying to begin a mentorship program through Mentor Collective. Uh, you will get more information about that in the fall. So if you are looking for a mentorship role from the graduate standpoint, that will be rolling out in the fall. 
Um, or if you wanted to be a mentor towards an undergraduate student, uh, that will be an opportunity for you as well. Also thinking about, you know, more opportunities to network. We are members of the Flint and Genesee group. And so they do have, um, or the Flint and Genesee Chamber of Commerce as well. They have these business training workshops. And as a student at the U of M, you get a 50% off discount and your code is STU24. They have lunch and learns every month. Um, I think it's the second Wednesday from 1130 until one. Uh, those are some great opportunities to do some networking on the local level um, to learn about, you know, different companies that are in the area, network and go to a variety of uh, business after our events if you're looking to network uh, here locally. Another place that I think hosts some good networking opportunities is Ann Arbor Spark. They host a variety of uh, training, professional development opportunities for our college students. So uh, research them, see what they have coming up. You know, they do a lot of networking, uh, resume building, um, other professional development workshops that are free for students. So those are the two that I would suggest checking out is the Flint Genesee Group and Arbor Spark. We already talked about student and professional development organizations. Um, we just missed a uh, link in the D. The uh, Engineering Society of Detroit hosts two events during the spring and summer months where it's linked in Lance or link up in Lansing and linked in the D. These are networking events specifically for uh, college students, undergrad and grad, where you can go and network with a variety of professionals from our top employers, you know, here in the state. And so I think this time they had uh, 15 employers there and about 250 students, right? Food is provided, a lot of networking and talking going on and business card exchanges, right? So this is not a job fair, it's more of that networking process to establish means for you to follow up with these employers and recruiters um, at a future time frame. So those are two good opportunities that you can possibly go to in the future. So that's Lansing Link Up, and that is late June. And linked in the D happens mid to late July. There's a variety of events uh, with the Automation Alley. If you are a STEM major, I would suggest checking them out for some potential uh, opportunities for college students in the Detroit area. They have some cool things also on September the 11th, there is Auto Owners Insurance has their open house and they're looking to partner and connect with students um, as well. They do a variety of activities during their open house to engage uh, college students. You know, um, a couple other open houses that may come up as uh, Domino's Farms, they have an open house as well um, in October um, in the past. Hopefully they'll get that going again this year. This fall, we're pushing some company tours. So if you wanted to learn about um, these different companies here on the local level, we're taking students to these companies to do some networking, participate in panel discussions, and also talk to alumni that transitioned from the University of Michigan Flint into uh, different roles within these companies. So um, if you got your pen and paper, September 20th, we're going to go down to uh, United Wholesale Mortgage uh, for a tour and some networking and talking about opportunities with that company. In October, we're going to go over to the DNR and Holly to talk about some of those cool opportunities. In November, we're going to try to get over to the uh, Flint Firebergs, um, attend a game, panel discussion, tour of the facilities and talk to other professionals that are working in the sports industry here locally. And um, we're going to go to Hurley Medical Center in December uh, to engage and learn about some of those opportunities within the healthcare industry at Hurley. This is going to go on monthly. <clears throat> so I'm um, still working on January, February. We're going to go to Insight um, and learn a little bit more about Insight uh, and what they do, some of the healthcare opportunities with them. And uh, we have a couple other uh, companies on the docket that we just have to finalize the date. So that is open uh, for students to attend. Uh, they're free events. Um, just got to work out some small minor uh, things with that to make sure the dates are solidified and ready to go. So we try to provide a variety of networking opportunities for you, as well as don't forget about the career fairs. Let me um, 
Career fairs are here. They're open for all students and alum uh, to attend those events. So some dates that are out there. Uh, September 25th is the College of Innovation Technologies Career Fair, uh, focusing on the, you know, your STEM majors over there in that college. On October the 2nd, we have the College of Health Sciences is hosting a career fair inside the William S. White Building. And then you have the School of Management Fair on October the 16th. Um, that is over in the Riverfront Building. And then we'll have the university-wide fair on November the 12th. So um, a variety of opportunities for you to come meet, network, and start uh, building those relationships with some of our employer recruiters that we've partnered with um, over time here at the university. So a lot of opportunities to engage with employers. Even outside of the career fairs, we host these employer and residence platforms where employers will come uh, set up booths and tables on campus to try to find ways to engage with um, our students, as well as we host a variety of virtual uh, workshops as well. So we try to, you know, host on-campus events and events in the virtual setting if you're not local. So uh, just uh, last month, we had the U.S. Department of State on campus um, telling students about opportunities with the uh, with opportunities with the U.S. Department of State as uh, U.S. Foreign Service officers. So we try to keep these things rolling continuously um, throughout the year, and uh, hopefully we can get you engaged. Resources that we have, you know, we talked about the career exploration piece. Once you take those assessments, you know, we highly suggest that you meet with um, a career manager or myself to talk about your results, um, to give some advice and explore some of these opportunities that, uh, you, that popped up in your career assessment. Um, LinkedIn resource out there for you. We do host mock interviews. So if you haven't interviewed in a while and you just want to brush up on your skills, you can come and hang out with me. We'll set up a camera, you know, or we'll just do it over Zoom. We can do this uh, mock interview and I'll give you some constructive uh, criticism or feedback about that interview and we'll go from there. We do have another platform called Big Interview. Uh, University of Michigan Flint students have access to it. Um, big interview is cool. Similar to LinkedIn Learning, they have uh, modules that you can listen to, review, and you can practice your interview. Um, just how we're discussing over Zoom, they have avatars that will ask you the question, you record your responses, and you can take that interview and you can send it to anybody within your network. And um, they can grade your interview. So if you decide to get on Big Interview, you know, review some of the modules, um, record yourself in the you know mock interview scenario, send it to me. I'll give you my feedback um, on that. So they have a grading card that comes with the that process on Big Interview. Big Interview hosts a variety of modules, um, including a salary negotiation module. So if you're not familiar with that process or how that works. Um, there's a variety of topics as it relates to interviewing uh, for those modules that they have on Big Interview. Also, there's resume assistance where you can make a mock resume on Big Interview. Um, we offer resume assistance as well. So if you draft your document and you just want some extra eyes to look at it, we can assist you with that process of resume critiques. There is the Writing Center as well. Um, I believe that was your last presentation, but they help with the whole um, a resume critique as well. We host a variety of networking opportunities. Um, the Alumni Relations Office will host Career Bites. Career Bites are um, different modules that you can review as it relates to that transition process uh, coming from student to employment or if you just wanted to you know, review a variety of uh, workshops or topics that may meet your interests, um, that is through the Alumni Relations Office Career Bites, very informative videos there. For our campus, our Career Services Office, we're building a, a platform of videos that students can review um, that are short, not too long um, for you to watch on our M Launch channel. So that is out there for you. And then we have a variety of career uh, specialists out there for you to interact with. So um, I already talked about uh, the career fairs, but you know, here's a flyer. All of our career fairs are posted on Handshake 
or you can get more information about these uh, career fairs at events.umnet.edu. Um, for your information, dates, times, how to register, all that stuff will be on um, Handshake or events.umnet.edu, or you can go into uh, Campus Connections. So there's several different ways to review our events that we host outside of the career fairs on all three of those uh, platforms. So that is out there for you. And the cool people that I wanted to introduce you to is on the next slide. So you've met myself. Uh, I'm Antonio Riggs. I work in the Office of Student Career Advancement and Success, also known as Career Services. So we help with pretty much um, everything as it relates to professional development and trying to get you engaged um, with professionals and or opportunities. For the School of Management, you have Justin Skiven. Um, if you haven't received emails from me or Justin, you'll probably be receiving a lot of them. So don't delete any emails that come from people on this list. I think we're super cool and we got good information about uh, different opportunities that may meet your interest and or um, employer engagement opportunities. For the College of Innovation Technology, you have Amanda Williams. Um, she is out there as the internship coordinator looking to get students engaged with employers as well. Uh, Monica Wilikowski is for the School of Nursing. Equasia Green is the internship coordinator for our public health and health sciences uh, department. And lastly, we have Kimberly Marsh, who is the career manager for our College of Arts, Sciences, and Education. We are all here resources to assist you in your professional development and employer engagement opportunities. So if you have any questions or need uh, some assistance, feel free to reach out to us and we'll do the best, our can, best we can to answer your questions or get you connected with somebody who can um, answer your questions and get you some more information. So um, at this time, I think that is pretty much all I have as it relates to the presentation. So if you have any questions, I'm here. Feel free to jump. Yeah, right. feel free to add any comments that you might have in the chat, or if you want, you can unmute and ask your question as well. We do have a lot of resources on our internet page. Um, so I'm gonna drop our website in there, in the chat. I think I already did, but I'll do it again. But if you make it to the internet page, um, there's a variety of information on there, big interviews there. There's some other job search platforms. There's some resources. Um, there's some um, sample resumes that you can use. Um, if you're looking to build a resume, and we're going to add some more over the next couple of weeks, um, that covers a variety of majors specifically. Well, not seeing any other questions today, Antonio. I just want to say thank you very much for all this valuable information. This is great. And I, we will make sure to have this video, and I'm sure I can get from Antonio his PowerPoint and make sure that you get that as well. So it is. Uh, it was great to have you here, Antonio. Thanks so much for sharing all of this. And thank all of you for coming today and for being a part of our Jumpstart. We're really excited to have you here at the University of Michigan Flint. Only a few more weeks until classes begin. Make sure you have all your classes, you get all set. If you need any help, reach out to our office, reach out to your academic advisors or your programs for any assistance or any questions that you might have. And uh, we'd be happy to help as well. Um, our email, again, is flintgradoffice at umich.edu. I'll put that in the comments. But feel free to, to throw us any questions there as well. But everyone, have a great evening. Thanks so much for joining us today. And uh, go blue. Go blue.